Welcome to Rise to Lead, the podcast where heart-driven leaders come together to inspire and innovate. They will share actionable tips and insights that help you lead your team more successfully, advance your career or business as a leader, achieve greater impact, and experience deeper fulfillment. I'm your host, Regina Huber guiding you through deep conversations about leadership that's rooted in service, freedom, and the desire to leave a positive mark on the world. Welcome to today's episode of Rise to Lead. I'm super thrilled to introduce you all to our guest, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome, Angel. Oh, thank you so much for hosting me, Regina. Glad it's to be here. Pleasure. I was I was actually so honored to be on your leading visionary show uh, podcast in the past, and uh, I'm delighted to have you on mine now. Can't wait to hear all the wisdom and the goodness that you're gonna share with us today. Well, yes, it was a pleasure to host you as well. So it's a mutual admiration party. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, let me quickly introduce you to our listeners. So Angel B. Hartwell, known as the Wealthy Life Mentor, love this, is an internationally best-selling author, evolutionary alchemist, and transformational artist, a Be the Change Movement to Watch award winner, and recognized as one of America's premier experts. She is the creator, executive producer, and host of the 13 times award-winning and Apple number one internationally ranked Wickedly Smart Women podcast. That was a mouthful, <laughs> but it's great. <laughs> and the new top 50 internationally ranked communicator award-winning Leading Visionaries podcast. Angel is a Quilly Award-winning writer whose work has been featured in multiple books and magazines, including the Huffington Post, Aspire Magazine, and Business Heroine. She has also appeared on the major media, on major media, including MSNBC's Nightly Business Report, and on over 1,000 live and virtual stages around the world. She is hired as a consultant by high achieving executives and purpose activated small business owners worldwide. Wow. So <laughs> let's get this conversation started, shall we, Angel? Yes. And let me just say, Regina, I also put my pants on the same way everyone else does one leg at a time because I like to, I mean, it's wonderful to have the bio read. And at the same time, I want to make sure that people understand I'm a human as well. I'm a real, a real person as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is so, so, so important uh, that we stay authentic, right? Mm -hmm. We stay who we are and true to who we are and true to our personal truth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in just a few sentences, tell us how you got to this incredibly successful place. Where have you, where did you start and, and how have you been able to get there and uh, really to gain fame and, and to win all these beautiful awards? Mm, well, great question. So um, briefly, like my early career, I spent the first 20 years of my career in the real estate business. And I seem to have always been somebody who rises to lead, like we're on the rise to lead um, podcast. Yes. So even very young, I was the youngest um, chair of my trade association. I, you know, became a vice president in my company in my early 20s. Um, you know, I have always gone into a space and risen immediately to lead. And so what ended up happening at the end of 20 year career in the real estate business, uh, where I was building an award winning project with two partners, 51 single family houses, 56 apartments and an office building. I was also the national chair of my trade association. I had a spiritual awakening. And as a result of the spiritual awakening, I ended up 
going down, you know, leaving that behind, going down a path of exploring my spiritual nature, discovering all these latent parts of myself that I just didn't know existed. The author came out, the uh, speaker came out, the healer came out, the performer came out, the artist came out, like all of these latent parts that were within me that I didn't even know existed. And, um, and then I went through this phase where as I was going through this exploration, I opened up my own art gallery and healing art center and then hosted this massive, um, I started art walk in my city. I started, I was part of starting the city arts Nashua in my city. And I hosted this massive event called Firefest, uh, which was a celebration of the visual performing culinary and healing arts in the center of my city. And so I, I rose again, you know, I rose into a leadership role to bring arts and make the city a center for the arts. And then I ended up in the online space. And so I've been in the online space for almost two decades now. And, uh, you know, that whole story is is one where I, again, rose into a leadership position um, first in online speaking and consulting and working with people around the world and then now in the podcasting space. So I seem to have a habitual <laughs> habit, of, a habitual pattern of rising to lead wherever I show up. So I have to be careful about what I choose moving forward <laughs> from here. Absolutely. But you're also the ideal guest for this podcast. Then. <laughs> <That's beautiful. laughs> and it's all about proactivity and courage, mm. right? So courage is a big one as well. We could say you reinvented yourself several times, but I actually don't love that word too much because mm -hmm. the thing is, it was already there inside of you. It was more a matter of uncovering and developing those mm -hmm. gifts, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Right. Yeah, well, so you said it's all about productivity. And I'm going to say, I'm going to push back a little bit on that because I think it's mm -hmm. important that we not be seduced by the culture of busy. Um, yeah. So, you know, for me, it has always been like, it's just natural. It's just mm -hmm. natural. It comes and, and I, you know, of course, you, you know, for, for example, with the awards, you have to apply, you have to put yourself out there. You have to, you know, be willing to raise your hand and say, I think that this content is worthy of being considered for an award, right? But there's no guarantees that you're going to win awards. And so for me, it's always been about, um, you know, initially it was just kind of, I, I, I was ignorant about it. I was mm -hmm. unconscious. I was unconsciously competent. And as the decades have passed and as all of these experiences have started to line up, you know, hindsight is always 2020, I am now able to see that it is about for me um you know more allowing it's a it's about allowing myself to say yes to opportunities it's about allowing myself to um you know say yes to applying for awards it's about allowing to come through me what wants to be brought into the world and it's more less about me being productive and more about me being a channel through which whatever is going to manifest will, will manifest because I've gotten out of the way, because I've allowed, because I've said yes, because I have agreed to, um, um, to pour my life force into whatever direction my vision is showing me. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and, and you actually, what I said is proactivity, not productivity. So oh, I might okay. have just misheard that, but <laughs> it's still a really wonderful and beautiful additional explanation. So that was really, really good. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's also about giving ourselves permission to shine, isn't it? You said right. the word allow. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. Right. Okay, well, so uh, and uh, forgive me if I, I heard productivity. I thought oh. I heard productivity, but it, but you said proactivity. So, yeah. So proactivity is is that allowance. It is that permission. It is that saying yes. And you did mention courage. So I'll say yes, it includes courage. Courage is actually one of the seven C's I have for creating conscious change. And courage is really about finding your heart. Right. Because your brain can make up all kinds of things that you could be doing. But your heart is what allows you to do whatever you're doing um, with devotion. I really like this. 
And you know what's so interesting? This is also why I'm so curious about your seven C's, but more about that later. Mm -hmm. It's because I had the seven C's in the past too for a leadership uh, talk, actually. And I'm so curious which ones are the overlapping C's because there are a lot of words that start with a C that mm -hmm. are relevant for leadership, in fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. But before we go into the seven C's, tell us a little bit more about who your typical clients are. You said they are high achieving executives. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this again and purpose activated small business owners. How do you support these clients typically? Maybe you give us an example for, for each of them. Right. Well, um, I'll use, I'll use a few examples. So my CEOs are people who are in you know, they, they've, they've, they're in an established business and the work that we do together is really about supporting them with, uh, creating boundaries around how their time is being used, uh, around optimizing their communications so that they can raise more capital in order to bring their visions into reality. Um, I'm really here to serve people who have, a, a commitment and a calling to create conscious change in the world. So I'm not necessarily the right fit person for, uh, you know, to be a CEO, consultant, executive advisor for a typical old school, you know, um, entrenched industry. <laughs> I want to use the right words here. But I am the right person for somebody who may be in an old school entrenched industry and has suddenly got an innovative change making course correcting consciousness raising vision to convert that industry to transform that industry to evolve that industry to be more um, contributing to the overall well being of people and planet and, um, you know, of course, also still having profits as part of that equation. So on the CEO side, those are those are the people I'm best um, here to serve, or any of them who are in that like corner office in their industry and are really thinking it's time for me to leave the executive position and go out and start my own consultancy, uh, or my own thought leadership business. And so the small you know, small businesses who are consultants, those are also my type of people. So as an example, I have a, a woman I'm working with right now who is literally the top expert in her industry. And, you know, people have her come in, have had her come in for years to guide and advise them. And she's done it for nothing. Yeah. It happened and now it's <laughs> right. And now it's really clear that she's got 20 plus years of wisdom that people value and that will allow the other people in her industry to thrive and, and create in uh, new and better ways what they're what they're up to. And so she's come to me to support her with this vast vision she has like she wants to change the whole industry and, and so we have a vast vision that we're working on which includes potentially a nonprofit association to be formed for this industry it includes her doing consultancy to have a baseline of you know multiple millions of dollars a year coming in to reward her for her wisdom right so it's all about helping my clients to structure things in a way that their wisdom can be converted into wealth and it can also be converted into some kind of a legacy See that can live on after her. So those are those are my kind of two areas where I work. Okay, great. Wisdom to wealth. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So I think you've answered this partially already, but I still want to ask you why you are passionate about heart-centered leadership and what that means to you or how you live it yourself. Well. I think I'll start with how I live it myself. I, as I mentioned, spent the first 20 years of my career life in the real estate business. And in that business, it was a very masculine dominated business. And really I was all in my head. You know, it was all about what are the numbers that are going in the boxes? Um, you know, relationships were, were purely transactional to make sure that the numbers went into the boxes correctly. And it wasn't until I had a spiritual awakening that I realized myself 
that I was completely disconnected from my own heart. And it was as a result of that spiritual awakening that I was able to find my heart and in finding my heart, um, allow myself, you know, there's that word allow again, allow myself to explore what actually made me happy, what actually brought me joy, what actually um, created an expansion within me, what, what actually allowed me to feel nourished and well and thriving rather than just like a, an empty body and a full head. <laughs> and so um, in in that process, one of the things I, I learned for myself was I actually let go of a lot of my head stuff for a while to, to allow the heart to have its way with me. And then it became clear that I had to marry the two. I had to marry, like I had to bring the best of the head back in to marry the heart um, in order to, to have unity internally and then to be able to actually serve in a positive and powerful way in the world. And so, you know, for me, heart-centered leadership is about first being in touch with your own knowing, with your own heart's desires, with your own greatest well-being and greatest joys. And then that becomes fuel. That becomes uh, an almost endless well of, um, of energy and capacity to then impact the world in a positive way where you're going to need your mind, you're going to need your intellect to structure things properly to not only keep the heart well and do the work that you're here to do, um, but also for that work to be supported in a way that's sustainable and um, able to be creating a long-term impact and legacy. I can totally see that, you know, this is very much aligned with one of the concepts of one of my frameworks. The, the framework is called powerful leadership transformation. It's actually a lot about self leadership as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the pillars of that framework is in fact, a self empowering mindset and heart set, because they are better together. <laughs> and and there's this congruency that we need yes. to somehow achieve it's not an easy job always but yes I also like to say just as you did in your own words the mind is better when it's when it's led by the heart not the mm. other way around so much right correct yeah I also really really very much like that you yeah. mentioned and they have to be married it's a partnership yes yeah. yes Totally. Yes. And I very much also like that you mentioned energy because not a lot of people do. I talk a lot about energy myself and I believe, you know, you mentioned fuel and energy and mm -hmm. energy also fuels literally everything mm -hmm. we do and we say and we think, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I totally get you, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that was part of my spiritual mm -hmm awakening was the discovery that energy is really what is the baseline to be looking at. Uh, we have been acculturated in Western culture for sure to give primacy to the mental body and to almost the exclusion or the invisibilizing of the essential energy that is actually life and life force and is the fuel for whatever we're creating. And so uh, it, it was a, a whole phase of my life where I discovered more about the subtle energies and began to work with my own subtle energies and began to work with a variety of uh, psycho-spiritual tools and techniques to learn how to better uh, assess my own energy uh, build my energy, store my energy, and ultimately direct my energy so that it wasn't diffused all over the place. And I think for anybody who's a leader, a leading visionary, a wickedly smart woman like yourself, you know, at, at the baseline, we need greater energy education and, and um, greater energy awareness 
before we start just trying to grind it out with our mentality, if that makes sense. It does make a lot of sense. Yes, absolutely. I, what you just described in several steps, I sometimes call optimizing our energy because mm -hmm. it's really a lot more about the quality of our energy than it is about the quantity or the level of our energy, isn't it? Well, I think both. We need to have, they, they've got to be married. It's We've both. got to have enough. <laughs> yeah, We've got to have sure. a quantity as well as the quality, yes. Right. And the quality is all about the refinement, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about refining the energy because you can have a lot of energy, but if you're if you're holding a lot of, let's say, for example, anger, then the quality of the energy is de degraded to the f to the frequency or vibration of the of the unresolved anger energy. It's not necessarily, you know, um, it, it will be creative. It will create something. It will often create destruction, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think it's both. I think it's the quality as well as the quantity. Because if you're drained and exhausted which often happens. You know, we were talking about my client earlier who had spent 20 years in the industry. She's top of the game. She's given away 20 years of guidance and wisdom and advice to other people. You know, um, now the time is for her to create those structures and containers that will allow her to actually receive back for all that she's given out. Right. So I think it is both uh, because if, if you to diffuse the quantity of energy you have, you'll end up burned out and exhausted. I totally get that too. Yes, and I agree. I totally agree. Uh, the mm -hmm. reason why I sometimes say it's not so much about the level of energy is because that's the first thing people think about when they think mm -hmm. energy. They think it's the I, oh, I have to be super energetic. I have to have these high levels of energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is true uh, also that energetic can look differently in different situations, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's different in different yeah. situations. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really, though, then in the end, if we don't talk about the quantity, the quality of energy, sorry, then, then we're leaving a big portion of it out. This is probably why I like to say it sometimes in this way, but otherwise I completely agree. Yeah, well, I agree with you. It it totally, we have to have both. We have to have both the quality exactly. and the quantity. <laughs> both. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. I heard that too. Uh, so, Angel, you came up with the seven C's for creating conscious change. You We already mentioned them a few mm -hmm. times now. I'm super curious about those. And I love the word conscious in there. Mm -hmm. So what are these C's for creating conscious change? Well, thank you for asking. So uh, I've developed these over the course of my 16 plus, 17 plus years here in the personal and professional development space based on really what I was experiencing myself and what I was seeing with my clients that I've been working with uh, for all these years. So the very first C is clarity. You have to know what it is you want. You must know what you want and you must be clear in that awareness. And one of the biggest things that I help my clients get is clarity. I like to say clarity is divinity. <laughs> um, once we have clarity, then then we can begin to marshal our energy to, to channel it and um, direct it in the direction of whatever it is that we want to change. So clarity is first. Um, the second C is courage. Because now we have to find the heart within us to be able to go for it. A lot of times a, a leader or a visionary or somebody who's called, it comes in first as an idea, right? Or a, an inspiration. So it does come into the mental body. We'll get hit with this like, oh my God, I'm suddenly feeling called to serve women to help them feel great speaking and powerful asking for money or, or whatever, you know, I, I'm suddenly here, I'm suddenly called to help people rise to lead, right? It comes in often as a, a, a vision into the mental body. Well, then you have to find the heart. You have to have the courage to be able to say, yes, I will. I will say yes to this vision. There are millions of visions being transmitted to us all day, every day. <laughs> 
uh, and and you know, eight billion people approximately on the planet, we're all getting vision, and very, very, very few people will say yes to that. Yes, because courage is in the heart. Courage is in the heart, and yes. and often what ends up happening is it's they don't have the courage to make change. Like we're talking about creating conscious change, mm -hmm. and and it requires requires a lot of courage to be willing to drop whatever you're doing or to, you know, to build a bridge to the next thing that you're creating, you know, or to take a flying leap. Some of us are leapers. We'll just say, okay, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> Let's take a leap over here. But most people need to build a bridge. So courage is the second C. Um, the third is get, you know, consulting, consult with somebody, consult. And that can be a coach, a mentor, a consultant, a trainer, um, consult with somebody find support from mentors and consultants and coaches who have been where you are. So for example, Regina, you've been called to help people rise to lead, right? And so anybody who's listening to you, who is suddenly receiving some kind of a calling, potentially around leadership, you're a great person for them to come to get consultancy from to get coaching from, to get mentorship from. I'm a great person for somebody to come and get coaching or consultancy or mentorship from because I've been called and I've, I'm a speaker and I've been heard and I'm a podcaster. So, you know, all of the um, ways to get your calling or your conscious change initiative uh, implemented in the world, there's somebody out there who can help you with that. You don't have to do it alone. And in fact, you're going to go further if you do it with somebody who's been, who's a few steps ahead of you, who, who can give you the wisdom of, a, and the results of years of investing in themselves. So, you know, when, when people come to work with me, I say, you know, you come to work with me for $15,000, say, for example, but what you're getting is 40 plus years of entrepreneurial experience plus millions of dollars that I've invested in myself. It's like the bargain. It's like a huge bargain yeah. to, to get <laughs> what I can offer for you for $15,000. Um, so that's the, the third thing is uh, get somebody to consult with or coach with. The fourth thing is cr create. This is where you have to actually, it's, you know, even with the best of coaches or consultants, you have to sit down and really distill and really begin to take the creative energy to structure what it is that you're doing, to structure your business, to structure your, uh, your initiative, to structure your program. You have to get into the creative zone and begin to create. Um, the fifth C is we need to check in. So um, oftentimes we'll get into a creative phase. And I've seen this happen a lot. It ha has happened with me. It's happened with my clients. We get into the creative phase and we're like, Ooh, this is amazing. This is juicy. We're creating, 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 creating. And we can get stuck in creation zone without really checking in if what we are creating is actually serving the calling. So I like to help my clients create and then experiment with a singular or maybe two or three creations rather than go on a creative binge and have 27 different things going on at once. Because when you're creating a business, when you're creating, um, you know, something that is meant to make long-term impact, we want to actually uh, control some of the variables so that we know that what we're creating, the market is going to, you know, happily receive that the, there's going to be cash exchanged for it. Uh, and so you can get stuck in the creative phase. So it's really important to check in. And that's step five, which is about, uh, you know, assessing and adjusting and aligning with what you really want. Because another thing that can happen, Regina, <laughs> is you can create a whole thing and then you can say, oh, my God, what did I do? I like gave myself four jobs instead of having one job. Or I, you know, I really don't like the way I feel at the end of the day because I've exhausted myself serving in the way that I've set myself up to serve. So we have to check in periodically to really make an assessment of whether this is working and whether we, 
we actually do want what we're doing and if not make the adjustments and, and alignments. Um, and then the sixth one, this was really interesting for me. Um, I, I didn't do it until I did it. When I did it, I was like, oh, oh, I needed to do that. So you actually need to choose to allow yourself to be in the dream. And so for years I had my, I was like, oh, I'm creating this. And it was always it was out here. It was always out here. And so from my experience, as an example, I got the calling to have a remote business back years and years ago to almost 17 years ago, I got the calling and I was like, oh, I'll build this business. And by the time my kid is graduated from high school, I'll be free and I can go anywhere in the world. And I have, have like seven or eight years. Well, I had actually created it within like 13 months, <laughs> but it was like psychologically, it was still out there. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to choose to step in to say, oh, I, I actually have this. And I had to accept it and allow myself permission to reach and realize that the, the dream had actually been manifested. And then the wow, last profound, yeah. I just yeah, it was a big say one. this because I, this is a very profound one and we are now at, uh, at number six, right? Yes. So yeah. number six, yeah. choose. Yeah. Yeah. Please go on. Yeah. And, and in choosing when you're choosing, you're, you're actually saying I'm in, I am in, this is my life. This is my business. This is what I'm going to do. I did it. I did it, you know, and, and that I did it. If you feel the, I did it in you, I don't know if you can feel it energetically, but once you choose, instead of having it be this conceptual thing that you're working towards all the time, once you choose to step in and accept and allow yourself to have what you've created, that's when you, you need to celebrate. And that's the seventh step. And what we're doing when we're celebrating is we're actually embodying, we're enjoying what we've manifested with our devotion to creating the change, right? I think we can often get hung up again, back in the creation process or the checking in process where we're, you know, in checking in, we're like, oh, it's not quite right. It's not quite right. It's not quite right. Or, oh, let me just create more stuff, create more stuff. Rather than just like, oh, we're, we did it. We're here. The ship is sailing. We're on our journey. We're going to have fun. Here we go. It's, it's, it's actually manifested. Um, and so the celebration is what provides the fuel for the entrepreneurship to, to go out there into the world and create the impact that it's here to make. Yes, I love that. So those are the seven C's. Yes, I love that. And and it gives you also that additional sense of meaning when you celebrate, I believe. Right. And so it keeps you going, exactly. keeps exactly. you going on the path. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to just quickly re repeat the seven C's. So there were clarity, courage, consulting, create, check in, choose and celebrate these are the seven yes they are wow really really nice i love it now unless you want to add anything to the seven c's i'm also curious so do do, do you want to add anything at this point or if not we could talk a little bit about how you communicate your vision with clarity because that's one of your other specialties of many <laughs> yeah i think I think I, what I do want to say about the seven C's is, mm -hmm. is to remember to be conscious mm -hmm. throughout the whole process, right? If you are here to create conscious change, the consciousness is actually the key for the whole process and be willing to understand that as you go through this process of creating conscious change, you yourself are also changing. And it's important to bring your consciousness to the changes within you, as well as the change you're here to make. Um, and know that sometimes when you go through that process of creating conscious change, 
you'll come to a point where it's like, I've done it. I've done it. I've celebrated it and I'm complete. So that we could add completion could be the eighth change, eighth C, if we, the bonus C. <laughs> right? Okay, the bonus, the bonus C is I am complete with this. I have done everything I could do. I have done everything I could do to bring whatever this is into fruition. So I'll give an, another example. I worked with a woman um, for about a year and a half who was running for a major office. And her whole initiative is about creating ma major change um, uh, politically. And as we were working together, one of the areas where she she did not have good courage was the area of asking for money. Okay. And if you are, you know, going to create conscious change, you need to be able to ask for money. <laughs> Whether it's, you know, in, in her case, it was a political thing. So it was uh, donations. Um, but, you know, if it's a business, you need to be able to ask for the sale. And so one of the pieces that we had to work on with her was really helping her to dismantle a lot of conditioning. Here's another C. Mm -hmm. A lot of conditioning that was uh, causing her to be resistant to asking for the money. And unfortunately, you know, due to a n number of different circumstances, it took her, a, you know, it took her a long time before she was able to dismantle that conditioning. And it could have maybe gone differently if she had been able to ask for money earlier in the game, if she had been, if she had been able to have the courage to ask for the money earlier in the game. And so ultimately her initiative did not take her to where she was originally seeing she was going to go. And she changed as a result of, of this whole process. Um, and she had to come to completion. She had to come to completion. She had to say, okay, it's over. Like it's over. The, this initiative is over. Uh, we've done everything that we could. And now it's, it's time to complete this and put it off to the side. And, and when we complete things, it's important for us to acknowledge the gifts that we received from that process. It's really important for us to um, know that there's wisdom and potential wealth <laughs> from that wisdom just from having gone through the process. And it's important for us to complete with honor, to complete with um, honor for ourselves for doing the thing and honor for the process and honor for any of the people who were involved uh, who were supporting that process as well. So. Yeah, I, I guess we have a bonus number C and number eight is, is the clean completion. And once you've completed, then the, C, the process the can start completion. again. Yeah, the, the clean the <laughs> double C, the clean com completion. And then then the process can potentially start again. You know, sometimes completion means I'm done. I'm 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 done with all of it and I'm resting for the rest of my life, yep. right? Um and and but often for anybody who has any kind of vitality in us you know, we'll complete one thing and then we have a little, little fallow period. And then it's like, gotta, gotta be starting something. What, what's next? You know? Yeah. Totally, totally. I have such a completion case too, in my stories <laughs> for sure. Uh, so yeah. one of those with honor, yes. And not with a lot of, you know, a, a, also with pain at the time, but then we need to get to that point when we say, okay, this is the end of this chapter. And mm. now a new chapter begins. Mm. And what have I learned? But also what have, how have I unconditioned myself? Or am I still unconditioning myself so that I can actually step into that next chapter? And your client did a lot of that, right? Mm. Because a lot of that conditioning is very deeply rooted and and, and, it, and it's, it's sometimes a bit sticky and it requires <laughs> constant work or conscious, conscious work. And for, for some people, it's faster. For some pe people, it's not so fast uh, because we have carried this around an entire lifetime up to here. So it's no wonder, right? Yeah, well, it's another, that's another C, you know, the conditioning. And, right. um, and that's the C that, that is actually primarily the root of the resistance of any of doing any of this yeah. is the conditioning. The conditioning is the root of the resistance. And... Um, 
yeah, it's, it's really important to bring consciousness to that and to continue to bring consciousness to that and to understand that, as you said, for some people, it, it quickly disintegrates. And for other people, it takes a little bit more time, which goes back to point number three, which is why you want a consultant or a coach or a mentor to hold the another C here container <laughs> to hold the container yeah. and to bring their consciousness in. Because when I bring my consciousness in, in to the container I'm holding with my clients, or you bring your consciousness in to the mm -hmm. container that you're holding with your clients, then we have exponentially more consciousness and more illumination around the conditioning. That is what's really the underlying root of the resistance. Exactly. And sometimes also additional methodologies that not everybody has studied or experienced uh, because it's not their unique expertise. It's just what it is. Okay, so let's quickly, I know we've been talking for a while, but I would love to quickly touch on the topic of communicating our vision with clarity. Um just maybe quickly, what's important in this context? What's your key message here? Well, I'm going to be paradoxical. The key message is clarity <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus brevity uh, okay. equals impact. <laughs> right. Clarity plus bre brevity equals impact. I, I mean, after all of the years that I've been in this business, I know that for some people, it's more about the how we show up than it is about the actual words that we deliver. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming back to the energy piece, Regina, so we want to have our energy clear as a baseline whenever we are out communicating our vision. We want to be grounded. We want to be present. We want to be um, you know, aware of the points that we want to make. And ideally, we want to make those points as briefly as possible. Because most people, whoever's listening to this, they're going to remember maybe a sentence, but they will, they will feel the energy. It's about the feeling that's being transmitted, about the energy that's being transmitted at the baseline that's really the more important piece to work on in terms of, of clarity. And then when we can look at, you know, what is the message that we're trying to get across how can we structure it in a way that allows for the greatest degree of understanding, uh, the greatest degree of comprehension, the greatest degree of, uh, of impact on the hearts of the people that we're speaking to. And it's very important for a visionary to get that core message really distilled so that they can easily communicate it in either an hour format or a five minute format or even a one minute format. So part of the work uh, of clarifying your message is really distilling it so that you're literally embodying the message energetically. And then the words need to just fit into the time frame, if that makes sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense, Angel. Also, when your message contradicts your energy, then usually it's the energy that wins. Always. And we always hear, and I'm, I'm not the one who in, invented this quote, of course, uh, we, we hear this all the time. People will forget what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And when your message is very, your verbal message then, or your word message is very clear, they might also remember what you said, actually. <laughs> yeah, most people, I mean, I, I, if you surveyed a room of a hundred people after mm -hmm. hearing a speech about what did they just hear, you'd be lucky if 10 of those people remembered one full sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but this is why, I'm, you know, but but they hear that maybe that that key message that yeah. was included. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so that's that's really uh, what, what I meant to say. But yeah, absolutely. You're totally right. <laughs> exactly. And so I think a lot of leaders get hung up on all the words, you know, mm -hmm. that they get they, leaders who are out there expressing their vision, which that literally is the most important thing that a leader can do is be constantly expressing the vision and enrolling people 
people into the vision and express the vision and roll people into the vision, express the vision and roll people into the vision. So um, when a leader is able to really embody energetically the vision and the enthusiasm for the vision, really more than anything, and then convey that enthusiasm, the words matter less, but they are important. You know, I think that, yeah. that it is important to have, um, it, it just helps to settle everything to have some kind of clarity around your messaging. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. we read the words, they are not always spoken and uh, the energy comes through as well, but maybe not as intensely. So we Correct. Would- that's when they maybe gain even more importance okay well this has been really really insight rich thank you so much for sharing all of this where can people find you angel and where can find where can they find your books your your podcasts Mm -hmm. all the good stuff yeah well thank you regina so much for having me it's been a pleasure and i actually have a gift for the audience i have a book it was a number one new release in three categories it's called be heard by millions and live your destiny A Creative Age Leader's Guide to Speak, Sell, Serve, and Succeed. And they can have this book, the whole book. It's a downloadable PDF by going to beheardbymillions.com, beheardbymillions.com. And uh, of course, you can listen to both of the podcasts, Wickedly Smart Women and Leading Visionaries. And then my main website is wealthylifementor.com. So that's where you can find me. Okay, great. And I will definitely also include all the links in the description. Again, this is a beautiful, beautiful and very generous gift. Thank you so much for uh, for giving this gift. I will definitely also download it. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> now, any, any last words before we close that you would like to share with us today? Yeah, I actually want to talk a little bit about investment, um, okay. Regina. Uh, you know, the people who are listening to Rise to Lead, you have already, if you're at this point in this podcast episode, you've already invested almost 50 minutes of your life to listening to Regina and I speaking. The key, uh, one of the keys, I'm not going to say the key, but one of the main keys for you to be able to step further into your calling is to have the courage to invest. It's not just having the courage to say yes to the calling, but it's also having the courage to put some cash on the table in um, in service to bringing your calling into reality. And I am quite sure this, this is true for you, Regina. I know it's true for me and all the clients that I've worked with. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars end up being invested um, for for you to become the leader you are rising to become, for you to become Uh, the person who creates the vision that is a lasting legacy. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of millions, sometimes billions of dollars gets invested. So being able to confidently and courageously put cash on the table is going to be something as that you need to be able to exercise as a leader, as much as asking for money, as much as the enrolling side of it goes you also want to be um, actively and courageously on the investing side of the money equation as well. So I think that's the only thing I had left to say, Regina, other than thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here on your podcast and share my message with your audience. What you just shared is so true. There are always two sides of the coin. Talking about coins. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, absolutely. Thank you so much again, Angel. It's been such a pleasure to have you on. Thanking me. Uh, thank you. Thanking me. <laughs> thank you. And thank yourself. Yes. Thank okay. yourself. Thank yes. Myself, I vote right. yes. <laughs> thank you for helping me make this a fabulous show. Wonderful having you on again. And thanks to everyone listening. Tune in again for the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to Rise to Lead. Keep shining your light, standing up for what's right, and inspiring others to step into their brilliance. If you like this episode, please give it a five-star rating and subscribe to the Rise to Lead podcast on your preferred podcast app. Until next time, it's Regina Huber. And in the meantime, 
Remember to rise to lead. <laughs>